Hey everybody, Ed Bowder from the Med School Medic Podcast, medschoolmedic.com, back with a five-minute pharmacology refresher, and today we're going to talk about succinylcholine, or anectine. Now, succinylcholine is a depolarizing paralytic. It's the only depolarizing paralytic that's on the market in the United States. The way it works is you have two linked acetylcholine molecules that are specific to uh, muscle nicotinic receptors. This drug specifically causes depolarization at the motor end plate, and when it does that, it's going to cause a very significant potassium dump throughout the body. Now, that leads the drug to have a whole lot of contraindications, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So what would you use a drug that has this very specific purpose for? And you're pretty much going to use it for RSI, and that's about it. Um, especially pre hospitally there's not a whole lot of other reasons to use this drug. There's some debate as to whether or not it's ethical to use it in hospital for other reasons, but right now, pre hospitally we're going to use it exclusively for rapid sequence induction. This is a patient whose airway we can't manage, we can't control them, so we have to kind of knock them down and paralyze them to maintain their airway. So how does this drug work? When we give succinylcholine, what's going to happen is it's essentially going to prop open the potassium channel. Remember going through medic school, we talked about the sodium-potassium pump and how we all hated it. This is where it becomes relevant. So you have this exchange at the sodium-potassium pump where, generally speaking, you're going to have an exchange of three sodium ions and two potassium ions. And this channel is always working all the time where, obviously, we have more sodium than potassium, so we have to figure out how to exchange them. So this is that sodium-potassium pump. When we give succinylcholine, what's going to happen is, and what happens is the, the exchange of sodium and potassium actually allows for muscle potentiation, potentiation. So that exchange is what allows muscles to contract and for the body to work. When we give succinylcholine, we prop open those potassium channels. So we just leave all this potassium dumping out through the body. There's no more sodium exchange. And because that ion exchange isn't occurring, it causes just systemic paralysis. And that's what causes the diaphragm to become paralyzed. It stops the patient from breathing, and that's how the combination of paralyzing the diaphragm and the rest of the body is how we get them intubated. So essentially, we give this drug, it props open the potassium channel, potassium dumps out into the cell and into the body, and that's what actually causes the paralysis. So why wouldn't we give this drug? Now, because it has all these different actions at the cellular level, we have to watch for a patient who's hyperkalemic. Now, this is someone who's taking, uh, who's being dialyzed, who has renal disorders, um, they're going to have excess serum potassium. Also, patients who are burned, that injury is going to cause excess serum potassium, malignant hyperthermia, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Again, these patients who have these muscular disorders are going to have excess serum potassium. Penetrating eye injuries because succinylcholine can cause increased intraocular pressure. So we don't want to give it to someone who has a penetrating eye injury. And for the same reason, narrow angle glaucoma is considered a contraindication because they already have increased intraocular pressure and we don't want to make it worse for them. So those are the contraindications. A big disclaimer with succinylcholine. Do not use this drug if you can't intubate the patient. Just, just don't. Seriously. You're going to paralyze this patient with this drug and they're going to stay paralyzed for 7 to 10 minutes. And if you can't paralyze them, if you can't intubate them, you really shouldn't be giving this drug. This is a drug that works very well, but it's a drug that should be given with a lot of caution. So succinylcholine is a depolarizing paralytic. It works for about 7 to 10 minutes. Um, your dose is going to be 1 to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. And do not give this drug to anyone who has excess serum potassium, and especially anyone that you cannot intubate. That has been your five-minute refresher. My name is Ed Bowder from the Med School Medic Podcast. Be sure to follow us on all the social medias listed above. Check out the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher, and we'll see you next time.